In lesson six today, this is an introduction to the lesson. We're going to do an exploration on creating Taylor polynomials and approximations. And we're going to use the function y equals cosine of x centered at x equals zero. And the first thing we want to do is find the equation of the tangent line for y equals cosine of x at zero. So taking the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and the derivative of negative sine at zero is zero, and our ordered pair is zero, one. So the equation of the tangent line would be y equals one. And then we can sketch that linear approximation on the right, on the graph right here at the right. So there's our approximation at y equals one. Now, notice that that's not a very good approximation of the entire curve. So our next step is to notice that the approximation has the same y value and slope as the original function. So what other property could be used that would help us to match at the point zero? And looking at the graph, I would say that the property that could help us out is the idea about concavity, since that cosine curve is concave down at x equals zero. And if we use that idea of concavity, that would answer the fourth question, what degree polynomial would this approximation need to be? And if I wanted to approximate that behavior right at zero, I would say it would have to be a quadratic, so a second degree polynomial would work for us. So concavity is the idea that would give us a hand, and then we would want to have a second degree polynomial when we're all finished. So I've made some charts here that it's going to help us out. And first of all, to make a quadratic approximation at zero for the function we're approximating, which was cosine of x, we would want our function to look like standard form for a quadratic. So we would have a constant and a linear term and a quadratic or second degree term. And then our table says if we take the derivative of this first expression, the constant would be zero, this term would be b, and then our quadratic term would be 2cx. If we take the derivative of cosine, we already know that that first derivative is negative sine. And then going one step further, the second derivative of our function would be zero and then 2c here. And then our second derivative for cosine is gonna be negative cosine. And what's the center of our approximation? Well, our center is at zero. So we're centered at zero, and we now have this information to build on. The second table asks us to find the quadratic approximation for the f of zero. So in this case, the f of zero, if we're looking back at this table, the f of zero eliminates all of this, and the f of zero would be a. And then the f prime of zero, and again, I'm looking back at my previous table, the f prime of zero, this term would go away and it would be b, and the f double prime of zero would be 2c. And then following that same pattern, the y of zero is the cosine value at zero, that was one, the first derivative at zero, we said was zero, and then the second derivative at zero would be negative cosine or negative one. Using that table, the value for a would be one, the value for b would be zero, and the value for c would be negative one-half. And I get that from solving this little baby equation here. So our quadratic approximation for cosine of x would be f of x, and then I'm using that, that expression right here, 
and the values we found here to substitute a plus bx, so 0x minus cx squared. So this is my quadratic approximation for cosine centered at 0 using a Taylor polynomial. And if we go back to the graph, that would be that original function here. Now I could clean it up just a little bit because it wouldn't quite match our, our cosine curve. I think it would come in really closely here. So this would be our f of x is 1 minus 1 half x squared. Okay? So in the exploration, our polynomial approximation matched the value of cosine of x, its first and second derivative at the center, and we said the center was x equals 0. So we're going to try to make it match a little more precisely by using even higher order approximations, but still centered at 0. And again, I've kept the um, table idea because it's just easier to keep track of. So our f of x would be a plus bx plus cx squared plus dx cubed plus ex to the fourth plus fx to the fifth plus gx to the sixth. And I'm just using alphabetical A, B, C to represent our coefficients there. And then taking the derivative, we would be B plus 2CX plus 3DX squared plus 4EX to the third and 5FX to the fourth and 6GX to the fifth. The function we're approximating is cosine. The first derivative is negative sine. The second derivative is negative cosine. And we could fill in this entire table here. The third derivative is sine. The fourth derivative is cosine. Our fifth derivative is negative sine, and you can see it start to repeat itself. And the sixth derivative is negative cosine. And then if you want to turn the video off and complete your table and come back to join me, we can check our work. Second derivative here is 2c plus 6dx, 12ex squared, 20 f x cubed and 30 g x to the fourth. Third derivative is 6d plus 24 e x and 60 f x squared and 120 g x cubed. Fourth derivative 24 e plus 120 f x plus 360 g x squared. Fifth derivative, 120 f plus 720 g x. And sixth derivative, 720 times g. Now moving on to this second table, you see I'm going to use this line here to evaluate the f of 0, which would give us a. And the y of 0, the cosine of 0, is 1. So we know the y of 0 is 1. So a equals 1. We're solving for that. In this second row, the f prime of 0 is going to be b. The f prime of 0 is b and the y prime at 0 is 0, so our b value is 0. And I'm going to turn this off so I have a little more room to write, but you can see where I'm getting this information from. 
our F double prime of zero would be 2C, and our Y double prime of zero would be negative one. So 2C is negative one, then C is negative one half. And F prime, triple prime, so our third derivative is 6D, and the third derivative at zero is zero, because the sine of zero is zero. So 6D equals zero, then D is equal to zero. And our fourth derivative at zero is 24E, and the fourth derivative at zero is one, because the cosine is of zero is one. So 24E is one, then E is one over 24. And our fifth degree, our fifth derivative at zero is 120F, and the fifth derivative is negative sine of zero, that's zero, so 120F is zero, and our F is zero, and finally the sixth derivative is 720G at zero, and the Y sixth derivative is negative cosine, that's negative one, so if 720G is negative one, then g is negative one over 720th. And this is at the end of our introduction. We can write a six degree polynomial, Taylor polynomial approximation of cosine centered at x equals zero. This has a special name known as a Maclaurin polynomial of degree six. And we can graph our result to see how closely it approximates or models the cosine. So using those numbers from our previous table right here and, that num and the polynomial right here, this is our six degree model. We're gonna replace A, B, C, D, E, F, G with the values we found here in this column and write that Maclaurin series. So A was 1, and B was 0, and C was our quadratic term, that was 1 half x squared, and D was 0, that's on the cubic term. Then we have 1 24th for our x to the fourth term, and then we have um, negative, we have 0 for our fifth degree term, and negative one over 720 for our six degree term. Now the interesting part about this is that we have um, some factorials here. This is one minus x squared over two factorial. And 24 is four factorial, four times three times two times one. So we can rewrite this as x to the fourth divided by four factorial, and 720 is six factorial. So this final term is x to the six over six factorial. Can you find the polynomial approximation if we used eight as our approximation? Well, I believe the Maclaurin series would be one minus x squared over two factorial plus x to the fourth over four factorial minus x to the sixth over six factorial plus x to the eight over eight factorial. And you can see how the signs alternate and we see the pattern jumping up every even power. So why is this important? Well, we can differentiate, we can integrate, and then we can approximate a polynomial much easier for a value that's near the center that we're looking for. And now, after we've done this exploration, you'll be ready to work through lesson six on Taylor polynomials.